When I originally made this video back in late 2021, I was in a rough part of my life where I was experiencing a lengthy streak of unemployment along with emotional trauma. The rant, as it originally was, although this video is scripted, was inspired by a conversation I had with my boyfriend where he talked me through my worries about feeling as if I had wasted my life due to taking so long to work on my depression and other dilemmas. With that said, I've gone through more life experiences since then, so I have more to say on this topic along with presenting its original points in a better fashion. The environment of capitalism forces certain universal dogmas, one of which happens to be the seemingly unquestionable concept of efficiency. Time efficiency itself is an odd concept. Usually when we refer to a resource being used inefficiently, we are talking about something tangible such as food, water, or electricity. Time, however, is an intangible resource. You can't save it for later or buy more of it, yet it is still finite like any other resource. Part of the reason we believe time can be wasted is due to how universal dogmas work. We don't question an idea if we believe its underlying logic can be universally applied. In the case of the universal capitalist dogma of efficiency, it's utilized as an aspect of control. Giving workers better conditions hurts a capitalist's bottom line, and thus creates a debate about efficiency instead of human rights. Regulating industries so they don't destroy the planet has the same effect, and turns the argument into a debate about whether efficiency is worth saving the planet, as stupid as that sounds. So, what's the debate with time? Like the painfully cliché saying goes, time is money. And just like any other thing that dares to threaten a capitalist's profits, perceived wastes of time, such as leisure, are not considered from the perspective of mental health, but instead financial cost. Because let's be real, when most individuals worry about wasting time, they're worried about wasted opportunities. A capitalist, in contrast, only cares about wasted time because it's other people's leisure that hurts their bottom line. They, as individuals, have plenty of it and don't have to worry about using it inefficiently since most of the worth generated by their company comes from the workers. The CEO can leave for a week and everything is fine, but if Claire from accounting is a sick day, all hell breaks loose. The result of our shyness in threatening efficiency in favor of the worker is prevalent in workplaces such as Amazon where employees have claimed time and time again that they've had to pee in bottles to use their time efficiently enough to keep their job with the company. This is not new information though, and my concern is how this aspect of control expands outside of the workplace. This is not strictly a workplace phenomenon, since we are programmed outside of the workplace to still have these same time anxieties in our everyday lives. As I said before, the concept of efficiency, and more specifically time efficiency, is a universal dogma, and if you stopped believing it as soon as you left the workplace where it is enforced, it breaks that illusion that makes it easier to question this ideological aspect of oppressive control. Think of it as the capitalist in your head. For me personally, the capitalist in my head would give me a hard time about being in a depressive rut for so long, because if I didn't have depression or solved my mental health issues sooner, I could have done something else with those years of my life I lost to it. Here's the key thing though, I'm not a machine, I'm simply an extension of nature, just as the shores are an extension of the greater seas or a flower an extension of its seed. Neither the waters or the flower worry about how efficiently they've used their existence. They just exist. It'd be silly of me to yell at a houseplant for wasting its time not growing as efficiently as possible. Similarly, it would be silly of me to beat myself up over how I could have spent my life if I had done it entirely optimally. Because life is inherently not completely optimal. This reminds me of a quote in regards to opposing music formats that goes, Somebody was trying to tell me that CDs are better than vinyl because they don't have any surface noise. I said, listen mate, life has surface noise. Now, this isn't me trying to argue that vinyl is better than a compact disc, but the point I'm trying to make here is that the very products of hyper-efficient capitalism change how we think, especially as they become more optimal and efficient over time. When we surround ourselves with products and services that are the result of this universal dogma, we question ourselves. If the machine isn't allowed to have surface noise, or errors, or take a minute to do something, then am I allowed to be inefficient? Is my life bad if it has surface noise? We become likely to think about our growth as the inefficiencies and errors of a machine instead of the growth of a flower. Your life's difficulties and troubles are not malfunctions. We all have different life struggles we need to face, and whatever time it takes to work on those shouldn't be seen as wastes of time. While that improvement might not be linear throughout one's lifetime, it's still progress nonetheless. However, this is only one instance where the capitalist in my head has harassed me about time. 
Now that it's many years later and I've improved my mental health drastically, along with securing employment, there's a different way in which the myth of wasted time bothers me. Employment changed how I beat myself up over the use of my free time, and my thoughts were now about how I wish I could have done more in my time away from work, or when I'm presently not doing much with that time, thinking about how I could have been at work making money instead of doing nothing. The antithesis to this isn't about getting a person to stop shaming themselves for taking time to grow as a person, but this time is about letting them know that free time optimization is a scam. I only think I didn't do much with my time away from work because I spent a lot of it recharging, which the capitalist in my head doesn't consider a productive activity, even though it's required maintenance for my overall health. Also, I'm not going to be in the mood to do something productive with every single day off I have. I cannot schedule when I want to do things, because I personally complete tasks better when I'm in the mood for them. With that said, yes, I could have spent some of those lazy days working, but then it's an interruption in the recharging I'm already doing on that day, which I'm sure would become painfully obvious to me if I started to act on those feelings. Lazy days, or as I like to call them, zero time, aren't solely about recharging either. As ironic as it sounds, giving yourself time to do nothing can actually help you function better in your day-to-day -day life. There are plenty of people who argue that boredom inspires creativity, and one example of helpful zero time I can give is related to writing. One of the very first things I learned about being a good writer is to never write something in one sitting. It's important to get some work done, and then leave it for a while, give yourself zero time, which allows you to come back to the writing in progress with fresh ideas. I follow this rule constantly, and in the passing of zero time, ideas might come to mind or I might look at my writing differently when I've given myself time away from it for a bit. So, even for the productivity hackers out there, you're technically spending your time better by purposefully using some of it to do nothing at all. With that said, it also helps to reclassify what we consider as being productive, or what a completed task looks like. While I initially saw things like working on my projects or helping others as my only legitimately productive tasks, it's important to expand that definition to things like listening to music or playing a video game, because it means that I actually used my leisure time to do leisurely things. Those count as tasks completed. Listening to some albums counts as a completed task. Getting my ass handed to me by giant bok hoblins in The Legend of Zelda counts as a completed task. I've used my free time productively if I did fun things during it, and in that context, such things are completed, productive tasks. I am maintaining my happiness by filling that free time with fun things, and won't end up regretting wasting it if I had fun during that time. All of these different perspectives in regards to how we should view free time can seem like a lot to take in. Agreeing with something is one thing, but internalizing it is a completely different level of difficulty. This is what I've come to understand with radical advice over the years. Like I said, growth takes time. Internalizing positive thinking and killing the capitalist in your head doesn't happen overnight. But if we're capable of believing in dogmas that kill us, then we are entirely capable of reprogramming ourselves to believe in things that don't.